Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. One is a 28 month old toddler named Kylie and the other is a four month old baby named Mia. Before we get started, I just want to address the fact that I am filming this video from a totally different location than my normal Montessori at home videos. Usually those are filmed down in my daughter's playroom. However, tonight we are going to be talking about sleep and both of my daughters are asleep. It is the evening instead of the early morning when I typically film. So I'm in a totally different area of my house. I'm actually in my own master bedroom. But Anyway, one of the number one things that I am constantly asked about by you guys, either in the comments on YouTube or over in my DMs on Instagram, is how to encourage independent sleep in a Montessori fashion. I definitely want to start out with a couple of really big disclaimers. First being that I am not an expert in sleep. I am definitely just a parent like you who is trying to figure out this whole idea of how to help your child achieve independent sleep. The second thing that I want to put out there is acknowledging the the fact that there is no one right way to help your child sleep. I am simply discussing the idea of how sleep might look in a Montessori home and I'm also going to be sharing with you how I help my toddler Kylie achieve independent sleep. So from one busy parent to another, today I want to explore with you guys a little bit more about this whole idea of encouraging independent sleep in your Montessori home. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is, is there a way to Montessori sleep train your child? That's the most direct question that I am often asked, usually in those words. And the short answer to that is no. <laughs> Dr. Maria Montessori did not include anything about sleep, no guidelines or anything like that in her writings. So this is definitely kind of an area that has been left open to interpretation. So as you probably already know, there are a huge variety of different strategies that you can employ to kind of help train or guide or teach your child whatever verbiage you want to use to learn to sleep by themselves. And they range from everything from no tears approaches to just letting them cry it out. What's most important though is that you follow the child. Now in a Montessori home, the one thing that I can say is that your primary goal is to help your child achieve independent sleep from as early an age as possible. So depending on your child's temperament, that might happen from day one. And if that has happened to you, then you're probably not watching this video and lucky you. However, the vast majority of us are not that lucky and we do have some children who need a little bit of help learning how to fall asleep by themselves. So because I'm not an expert, I am not going to sit here and go into all the different strategies that there are. In this case, Google is your best friend. All you have to do is pop on there and type in sleep training strategies and you will be bombarded with a ton of information on all of the possible variety of approaches that you can take. But some of the things that you can do right off the bat is to consider how you're setting up your child's sleep environment. Oftentimes you see these beautiful, gorgeous bedrooms that are completely Pinterest worthy, that are designed by parents who are very well intentioned. But the problem is they're just way too overstimulating for a child to even fall asleep. So when it comes to your child's bedroom, definitely less is more. You really want to limit the number of things that are on the walls. And if you do choose to place toys into your child's room, make it a limited number of toys, especially if you're planning to use a floor bed setup because your child will be able to get in and out of their beds by themselves. And if they have too many choices available, then that's just a recipe for your child not going to sleep. So the less number of options you can provide for your child during their independent awake time, either before or after they fall asleep, the better off they're going to be. Obviously, if you choose to have your child in a crib, which there is nothing wrong with that, if that's what you're most comfortable with as a parent, then you don't have to worry about the whole toy issue because they won't have access to those unless you're in there with them and you've taken them out of their crib. Another thing to consider is the general atmosphere of the room. So in addition to it not being super overstimulating with the way it's decorated and designed, you might consider adding some blackout curtains just to help dim the lights down. Scientifically, darkness promotes melatonin production in your brain, which helps induce sleepiness. So if you're expecting your child to sleep in a brightly lit room and they're having trouble, that might be part of the problem. Now I know there are some kids who can sleep in conditions like that, but generally speaking, sleeping in a dark room produces a much better quality of sleep. So that's something to consider. And if you are worried about noise, if you happen to live in a noisy area or if you have dogs at home, I know I do, something as simple as a white noise machine can make a world of difference to kind of just act like a buffer to some of those outside sounds that might otherwise wake your child up once they've actually fallen asleep by themselves. So once you've really given some thought to your child's sleeping arrangements and really set it up to promote successful sleep, then 
then it's time to kind of explore which sleeping strategies you're most comfortable with. Again, there is so much variety in how you're going to put your child to sleep that I don't want to say that there's any one right way. But whatever strategy you choose, you really want to observe your child. This whole idea in Montessori is to follow the child. So really, when all is said and done, if that is your ultimate goal and that's what you're doing throughout this process, then you're apt to be much more successful. If your child does not seem to be benefiting from the strategy or learning from it whatsoever, there's nothing wrong with abandoning ship and trying something different. You have to do what's right for your child. So now I'd like to share with you how I achieved independent sleep for my toddler. So as I said, my daughter Kylie is 28 months, she's two years old, and she has been sleeping in a Montessori floor bed since she was nine months old. Now I probably would have moved her to a floor bed much sooner than that. However, I only kind of stumbled into this whole Montessori at home philosophy when she was about six months old. And at the time, my husband was out of town for work. He was actually in a whole different country. And so I had to wait for him to to come home before I was able to really set up her room the way that I wanted to transition it. We basically did a complete overhaul of her room. So by the time it got around to being finished, she was about eight or nine months old. We initially started her out with a simple mattress on the floor, just like my daughter Mia has right now. But eventually we noticed that she was a very active sleeper and she kept rolling out of her bed, which honestly wasn't a problem for me. I mean, her floors are carpeted. It was a comfortable place to sleep. And sometimes she would roll out of bed and stay asleep or fall back asleep very quickly and sleep there the rest of the night. And I didn't see anything wrong with that. She was completely safe and otherwise seemed pretty comfortable as far as I could see. But the problem was most of the time she would wake up when she rolled out of bed. So she was waking up constantly throughout the night because she was a very active sleeper. She still is to this day. And I really needed a solution. So my husband and I went to Ikea and we purchased the Ikea Kura reversible bed. We took the slats out so that the bed would not be raised up. So in effect, what we ended up with was a Montessori floor bed that now had like a little border around it and one little area where she could crawl in and out by herself. And that 100% solved our problem. She's still sleeping in it to this day and she rolls around all over the place throughout the whole night, but she doesn't fall out and now she stays asleep. So again, another classic example of observing your child and seeing what's not working and trying to find a solution to fix it. She also sleeps with blackout curtains and a white noise machine, as I suggested earlier on in the video. And that definitely helps her go to sleep Sleep, especially during the daytime when there's a lot of light and a lot of kind of random noises happening throughout the day. So that's kind of her environment set up and that's how it's been since she was a baby and not a whole lot about it has changed. Now, as for how I helped her learn to fall asleep by herself, that is a whole nother story. <laughs> I think I nursed Kylie to sleep for probably a good majority of her first year. I never intended to do that. Of course, I had done all this reading and research that said that it was going to create a sleep association that I didn't want her having. And I knew that 100% going into it, but as a sleep deprived first time mom, that was the only way that I could get Kylie to go to sleep. I tried everything under the sun. We rocked, we bounced, we walked, we sang, we sat in the glider. I sat holding her completely still. We didn't have any of the baby devices like swings or bouncers or anything like that because that's not part of Montessori philosophy. So those really weren't options for us. Not to mention those are not safe places to leave a baby to sleep anyway. But I literally tried everything everything that I had available to me and nursing her to sleep was reliably the only way she would fall asleep. So I basically just gave in and I nursed her for almost a year to sleep, which as you can imagine, created a pretty nasty sleep association. When it came up on her first birthday, I knew that we were potentially thinking about maybe having a second child and eventually I was going to start weaning her off of nursing to sleep anyway. So I started exploring this idea of putting her down to sleep without nursing nursing her and what my options were for that. And what I ultimately ended up settling on was I would nurse her in the glider outside of her room where it was brightly lit as part of our bedtime routine and also her nap time routine. And before she actually fell asleep, I would then pick her up and take her to her room and put her down in her floor bed and hopefully wait for her to go to sleep. Unfortunately, she had other plans in mind. She was not happy, as you can imagine, about not nursing to sleep anymore. So what I ended up doing for several weeks on end before it finally subsided was I, I basically just sat there with her. I had never left her side. I sat there on the floor next to her bed, sometimes with my hand on her back or holding her hand or something just to kind of reassure her that I was there. And I kind of just let her grieve this loss that she felt about not nursing to sleep. 
In the beginning, I couldn't help myself. I was very sad about it too, and I felt horrible to see her so upset, but I knew that something had to change, at least for my family situation. So I often sat there crying next to her. And as horrible as this might sound, I kind of eventually got used to it. Like I expected, I knew that's what she was going to do. So I wasn't quite as upset about it anymore. I wasn't crying. I was able to control my own emotions about it. But again, the crying for her did go on for maybe like two or three weeks before she finally stopped. Over the course of that time though, the length of crying did die down. And then it just got to the point where one day she just accepted it and she didn't cry at all. I would just put her down and stay next to her and she would go to sleep. So I think it was right around this time that we also kind of weaned all together. And again, I did it on her terms um, without going into too much detail because that's not what this video is about. I basically just started giving her a choice before bedtime. I said, do you want to nurse first or do you want to do bedtime stories first? And one day she surprised me and said bedtime stories instead of nursing. And I just kind of went with it. And eventually I think after just a few days, she stopped asking to nurse entirely. Every single time she wanted bedtime stories, she never asked to nurse afterward and that was kind of it. So now I had the sleep association broken and we weren't nursing at all anymore. So that was entirely out of the picture. Now my issue was that she needed me in the room in order to fall asleep because that's what she was used to. And at this point, this was the time that we were actively trying to get pregnant with Mia. So I was kind of desperate at this point to really help her learn to sleep by herself as soon as possible because I knew with a second baby in the mix, I wasn't going to be able to sit with her for the sometimes 20, 30 minutes that it would take her to fall asleep. So I kind of set out on a mission to help her learn to do that as quickly as possible. So basically here's what I did. It was a gradual process of me kind of moving myself further and further away from the side of her bed and eventually out the door. The first couple of days that I tried this, I sat right next to her bed, just like I always did. And I waited for her to go to sleep. Once I felt like I was ready to jump in, I think I moved myself about half halfway across her room. So I wasn't next to her bed. I wasn't next to her changing table dresser thing on the other side. I was kind of in the middle of her room and she noticed right away that I was in a different spot. Like children are very attentive to detail and she cried about it. It was almost like we had regressed a little bit, but she wasn't crying nearly as much. It was just more like some whimpering and like, hey, what's going on? What's different? Why are you not right next to my bed? After a few days, we were kind of back to normal. She was falling asleep. She didn't mind that I was sitting there in the middle of the room and all was good. Once I felt like she was comfortable with that, I moved again a little further away. I sat next to her changing table now, which was on the other side of the room. And she, again, she started crying because I was further away, but after a few days, she kind of accepted it, felt like that was the new normal and it was okay. So I kept doing this gradual process of backing myself up further and further until eventually I got to the door. I think what I did was I actually sat outside the door with the door mostly shut just so that it was still kind of dark in there, but not 100% so that she could still see me in the crack of the door. And that was definitely a big change. She was very nervous about the fact that I wasn't in the room at all now, but she still had reassurance that she could see me. So it took a few extra days, but we kind of went through the same process, a little bit of crying. Eventually she accepted it and all was fine. And we were able to move on. The last step was I shut the door all the way. She couldn't see me at all, but I stayed outside the room and I allowed her to get up and check for me, which she did <laughs> probably about seven or eight times for several days in a row before she felt comfortable that I wasn't going to go anywhere and that I was still outside the door and that she felt comfortable enough to go to sleep. So I think we did that for probably like two or three weeks. So she did check for me kind of randomly on and off. There would be a day or two that would go by where she wouldn't check for me at all. And then one day she would get up and check for me. So I was really glad that I stayed outside the room for as long as I did. And then eventually time passed and it just got to the point where I sat outside the room, but she she just stopped checking for me altogether. Like it was just long enough that I realized that she kind of grew out of it. She understood that going to sleep meant that I wasn't going forever. So once I reached that point, I was kind of like, okay, I think we did it. And I just stopped standing outside of the room and that was it. There were one or two times after that process where she got up and she came out of the room to look for me, but I was always watching her on the baby monitor. So I saw that she had gotten up and I was able to kind of intercept her as soon as she left her room. And the fact that she was able to find me so quickly was still reassuring for her. But eventually she learned that even if I'm not there right away, I am somewhere in 
the house and it's not scary and it's okay and she can always leave her room whenever she wants to to come find me and ever since then sleep has never been an issue we have a very regimented bedtime routine every single night that we follow to the letter so she knows exactly what the steps are she could probably do it all by herself if necessary not that I ever would expect her to and we go to bed at the same time every night and I lay her down I kiss her goodnight and I walk out of the room and that's it I think when all was said and done I finally achieved that setup where I was able to go in and just leave her and walk out and she would go to sleep at about 19 months so it was definitely a gradual process it did not happen overnight but I did it using this gradual strategy that I felt most comfortable with yes it did involve some tears and some crying but I never left her by herself to cry it out I was always there with her just kind of reassuring her and providing her that emotional support with my presence and for my daughter that was enough now that I have a four-month-old baby in the mix I am kind of exploring this whole idea of independent sleep all over again and honestly it's a different ball game this time around because I have another child I can't spend 45 minutes trying to put her to sleep by myself in a dark room because I have a toddler to watch that cannot be left to her own devices in the house for that long so I'm definitely approaching sleep with Mia a lot differently than I did with Kylie we all know sleep is super important for brain development and growth in children and so I'm just kind of on a mission to help her achieve independent sleep as early as she possibly can just like you I am doing the best that I can for my children and their sleep is so important to me if you guys have any questions about something that I discussed in this video today then please feel free to leave me a comment below and I'd love to chat with you guys about it and if you did like this video you found something that you thought was helpful then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up just in case you're new to my channel I wanted to let you know that this video is part of a larger series called Montessori at home which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children so if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of then you might consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye